Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at two of the worst bus crashes in Australian history which left a combined 56 people dead, with both occurring in the span of two months in 1989 on the old Pacific Highway between New South Wales and Queensland. It's worth noting that both of these accidents occurred during one of the most expensive and dramatic pilots disputes in Australian history, the 1989 Australian Pilot Strike, which was coordinated by the Australian Federation of Air Pilots with pilots of Australia's domestic airlines, Australian Airlines, ANSET Australia, IPEC and East West calling for a limitation of hours worked and a 29.5% pay increase in order to combat rising inflation. However, the Australian Council of Trade Unions had struck a deal with the Hawke Labor government to limit salary increases to 8%. On the 18th of August 1989, 1,645 Australian domestic pilots of Australian Airlines and ANSET walked off the job in what was supposed to be three days of rolling stoppages. However, this would turn into a dispute which would engulf the nation until March 1990, when the defeated pilots surrendered. The government of Bob Hawke sided with the airlines, and 80% of domestic pilots involved in the strike would never fly again, with many heading overseas and others forced into early retirement. A desperate Hawke government authorised Royal Australian Air Force jets to fly domestic routes. People flying from the east to west coast of Australia often took flights via Southeast Asia, and foreign pilots were brought in along with foreign aircraft, but it was never enough to fill the void, and the Flight Attendants Union of Australia refused to allow domestic flight attendants to service foreign aircraft flown by foreign pilots. Australia's long-distance railway industry, until this day, remains barren at best. There are no longer any long-distance trains out of Queensland, necessitating a change in casino in New South Wales when travelling between New South Wales and Queensland. For instance, from Sydney to Melbourne, it takes 10 hours and 50 minutes by the XPT train, the fastest train in Australia. It takes 9 hours and 10 minutes to drive, and 90 minutes to fly, on a route which is now serviced by four airlines, Qantas, Virgin Australia, Jetstar, and Regional Express. As a result, people without cars and international tourists were forced to use coaches. While this wasn't unheard of prior to the pilot strike, with the duopoly of ANSET Australia and Australian Airlines making out-of-state airfares unaffordable to many at the time, with numerous coach operators linking every major Australian city, the coach industry saw an unprecedented boom during the pilot strike of 1989. Sunliner Express was a relatively new operator, having been founded in 1986, and operated 41 buses servicing Brisbane, Cairns, Melbourne and Sydney, headquartered in Manly, in Sydney, New South Wales. A two-year-old Sunliner Express Scania bus was travelling from Sydney, Australia's biggest city in New South Wales, to Australia's third biggest city, Brisbane in Queensland, departing Sydney on Thursday the 19th of October 1989 with 45 passengers on board. As the bus was driving near Grafton, New South Wales, approximately two-thirds of the way through its journey, 640 kilometres from Sydney and 345 kilometres from Brisbane, between 3.50am and 4am on Friday the 20th of October 1989, a semi-trailer truck driven by David Kevin Hutchins carrying a load of tinned pineapple juice veered onto the wrong side of the Old Pacific Highway. The bus tried to avoid the semi-trailer, but the old Pacific Highway was too narrow. The truck, penetrating the entire right side of a bus, spilled passengers onto the road and caused the bus to roll onto its side, with debris and bodies spewed over about half a kilometre of the highway, and pineapple juice and diesel fuel littered the highway, with the scene embellic of a battlefield. In the words of police, on the scene, anyone on the right-hand side of the coach had no chance of survival. 21 people were killed, including the driver of the semi-trailer truck, who died instantly. 18 of the passengers died instantly, torn from their seats when the right side of the bus was ripped apart. A further 22 people were injured, including the driver of the coach, who escaped with leg injuries and was taken away in a serious but stable condition. A woman, who was eight months pregnant, lost her child in the accident. 
Owing to the time of the morning, many passengers were asleep when the collision took place. Police immediately set up a roadside morgue in dealing with the calamity of the coach accident. The worst cases were airlifted to hospitals, with planes flying to the Gold Coast in Queensland, while ambulances took people to hospitals in Grafton and Lismore. Families were torn apart by the accident. Two survivors, Colin Omisher and Angela Omisher, lost both of their children, 19-year-old Gavin and their 18-year-old daughter, as well as Gavin's fiancée, Vicky Lee McGrath, who was also aged 19, their brother-in-law who was visiting from the United Kingdom, Leslie, aged 46, and his wife, Nadine Omisher, who was aged 42, as well as their son, as well as two friends who were traveling with them from Sydney. The family was on their way to Queensland for a sailing holiday, and while they were meant to fly with the pilot strike, they were forced to take the bus. Additionally, 14-year-old Natasha Kipper lost her mother and brother in the accident. They were traveling to their grandfather's funeral in Queensland, with their grandfather having passed away two days prior to the accident. But instead, there were three funerals held on the one day. Families awaited in Brisbane for news at the Sunliner Express bus terminal and were notified by police and taken to Grafton by coach. While both vehicles were going over the speed limit, the truck driver had a high concentration of epindrin in his blood, which was 80 times in excess of a normal level and was used by truck drivers to stay awake and alert. Two hearings occurred in February 1990 and found that the accident was affected by the narrow width of the highway at 6 metres, with both vehicles travelling over the speed limit and a lack of regulations regarding driving hours for truck and bus drivers, which necessitated drug driving facilitating driver fatigue. It was recommended the construction standards for buses and bus seats be changed, with the use of multi-combination heavy vehicles, the use of radar detector devices, and road safety advertising, as well as education, with a ban on the use of epidrin. Hutchins took the blunt of the blame for the Grafton bus accident, and was seen as the cause of the accident, who was described by New South Wales Chief Coroner Kevin Waller as the personification of everything that a driver fears in a truckie. It was found that Hutchins had a terrible driving record, had falsified his logbook, habitually broke the speed laws and took drugs to stay awake. However, with the pilot strike continuing, people had little choice but to continue getting buses. On the 22nd of December 1989, one coach was Sydney bound from Brisbane and operated by McCafferty's coaches, coach 1335. The other coach was operated by Trans City Express, coach 1238, bound for Brisbane from Sydney. Both buses were Denning Landseed tourist coaches and both were completely full owing to the festive period and no flights. McCafferty's Coaches was an Australian family-run interstate coach business operating across Australia and founded in 1940. It was one of the biggest coach operators at the time, with a near-perfect safety record. Trans City Express was founded in 1971 as Western Road Liners and commenced servicing interstate coach operations in December 1987. On the same highway, the old Pacific Highway, 12 kilometres north of Kempsey in New South Wales, approximately halfway between Brisbane and Sydney, 430 kilometres from Sydney and 488 kilometres from Brisbane, both buses collided head-on at a slight bend at Clybucca Flat in the worst road accident in Australian history, with 35 people killed, including both drivers, and 45 people injured, the youngest of whom was two, with the majority of deaths occurring on the Trans City Express bus. Of the people on board both coaches, they were mostly teenagers, with many from Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, as well as an American and individual from London and a New Zealander on board. All visitors from overseas survived the accident. Both buses were driving at 100 km per hour in light rain at the time of a collision across a tight bend, albeit in a good section of the old Pacific Highway.
100 kilometers was the nationally agreed speed limit for all heavy duty vehicles. The impact snapped seats from their anchor bolts with seats and passengers thrown forward and luggage thrown across the highway and the McCafferty's coach embedded in the front five rows of a Trans City Express. Survivors smashed through bus windows to escape, staggering to the veranda of a roadside home. A morgue was set up on the Pacific Highway for bodies to be identified, with bodies identified by loved ones before taken to a local factory and flown to Sydney. Air ambulances and helicopters carried the injured to hospitals in Kempsey, with 20 individuals taken to Kempsey, Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour and five flown down to Sydney in a serious condition. From midnight on the 23rd of December 1989, in response to the accident, New South Wales brought in a 90km speed limit on all state roads for heavy duty vehicles, which deeply angered truck drivers. Queensland elected not to follow suit. Relatives met police in Sydney and Brisbane with confusion over who had survived, who was injured, who had passed away, as well as who had gotten on board each bus. It was found that the driver of the McCafferty's coach had fallen asleep at the wheel, causing the vehicle to travel straight through a left-hand curve on the highway and collide with the Trans City Express coach. Neither driver had the opportunity to apply their brakes or dim their headlights, and neither coach was speeding at the time of the crash, nor was there a mechanical fault with either coach. The driver of the McCafferty's coach was about to end his shift, and was to be relieved at Kempsey. Waller recommended following the Grafton bus crash for the curve just eight weeks earlier that the old Pacific Highway be upgraded to a dual carriageway between Newcastle and the Queensland border, with Waller describing the highway as having been totally inadequate for 20 years and recommended a 90km speed limit for heavy duty vehicles. Waller noted that without a dual carriageway, the accident at Kempsey and Grafton would be repeated. Both the State Government of New South Wales and the Commonwealth Government promised that the dual carriageway would be completed by 2006. However, the project was slow to start, and while upgrading began in 1996, seven years after the bus accidents, it was only when a B-double truck drove through a house, killing an 11-year-old boy in Urunga in 2012, that upgrading of the highway kicked into action. The project was not completed until December 2020. Where the collision occurred at Kempsey was bypassed in May 2016 by a dual carriageway and is named the McKayley Valley Way. Memorials to people killed in the Grafton and Kempsey bus crash remain at the site of the accidents with another memorial at Clybucca in the Clybucca Memorial Gardens for the Kempsey bus crash. Waller also recommended research into coach seats seat anchorages and seat belts, and better emergency exits for coaches, as rescuers at the Kempsey bus crash were hindered by the positioning of the exits 2.4 metres from the ground. Amazingly, both coaches were rebuilt by Denning by June 1990 and allocated numbers 1378 and 1379. Both bus accidents were described by the National Transport Commission as arguably Australia's most catastrophic examples of high consequence, low probability incidents in the bus industry. Sunliner Express was placed into liquidation in February 1991, ceasing operation. Transcity operation ceased in March 1992, while Western Road Liners continues to operate with 26 buses, primarily servicing Western New South Wales. Much of its fleet was sold off and McCafferty's bought three buses, including Coach 1379. Coach 1378 was involved in an accident exactly 14 years after the Kempsey bus crash on the 22nd of December 2003 while travelling from Rockhampton south of the Bruce Highway in Queensland and was involved in a head-on collision with a truck causing six minor injuries. The coach was written off as it was damaged beyond economic repair. In October 2004, the McCafferty family sold their shares in McCafferty's coaches and its operations were rebranded as part of Greyhound Australia. Owing to low-cost flying with Jetstar and Virgin Australia increasing competition amongst the airline market, the coach industry in Australia is nothing like it was in the 1980s and Greyhound Australia is the only national coach operator within Australia. 
Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day, and remember the truth is always more interesting than fiction.